In today's episode, I'm going to show you the Sane Smart Infi-20 belt printer. I got this as an early release and I had some struggles. I was able to fix it and get it to print good and I also found some firmware issues that they tell me they're going to fix. So let me explain it all on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. The Sane Smart Infi 20 is a unique design. It's not a rebrand, it's an actual Sane Smart design. It has a build area of 200 millimeters by 180 millimeters and essentially an infinite length. For those really long designs, you can get a roller accessory that connects to the end of it, but it is an added cost. The machine does have a 32 bit controller with TMC 2208 silent drivers, a 350 watt power supply power loss recovery for resume printing, and also a filament runout sensor. It also has the hardware to connect through Wi-Fi, I just haven't been able to get this to work yet. I believe it's running some form of Marlin, but I can't verify that, but I know the menu system is very, very simple. I did all my printing from the included micro SD card. It's got the instruction manual and also the slicing software on it and numerous sample prints which were actually really useful. The first thing I did was follow their instructions and use the feeler gauge that's included to set the nozzle height. And once I did that then there's a test print that you can run that's actually a zigzag back and forth for leveling and you watch that to make sure you get everything set so you can fine tune it. It's similar to the test print that I do on my under threes to live adjust the beds. Well it turns out there's a flaw in that test print apparently. So my first print which was their test uh, calibration cube came out really squished. So I went back and manually adjusted it myself and then got this thing to start printing pretty good. I was able to print a benchy and it came out actually really, really nice. So then I decided to print something bigger. And they have this sword or dagger, which is a test print. And it got this far, and then my problem started. The nozzle clogged. In the process of trying to figure out the clog, I unscrewed the coupling to take the PTFE tubing out. But the couplings on this thing are really, really thin. So as I turned it to get it out, it cracked. And then I had thread stuck inside and I cleaned that out put a new coupling but as I was putting a new coupling in it broke because it's a very thin wall coupling so it left me with a hot end that I couldn't even use the hot end assembly is very unique this is not like anything I've seen before but it does have PTFE tubing trapped between a fixed point and the nozzle so I didn't need to take that coupling off at all so if you have this machine do not touch that coupling it'll probably break after I took this apart and took the fan off, I could see that there was a screw actually tightened against the coupling. That's why this thing wouldn't come out and that's why I broke the coupling. But they did send me a new hot end assembly. I was able to get that installed and since then this thing has been printing beautifully. So I went back and tried to print another dagger or sword and I got to this far and I ran out of filament. And then the filament runout sensor, it paused it, but I couldn't do anything. <laughs> It wouldn't let me like reload and restart. It just kind of like didn't do anything. So that's one of the firmware flaws that I found. So I actually started another one of these and in the process of just cleaning up the bench around it, I bumped the cord and disconnected it. So I didn't even try <laughs> to test a power loss recovery, but I did. Inadvertently I did and it did the same thing as the filament runout. It just like froze. In fact, it froze, but then the print was sitting on the belt and when I powered it back on and said continue and actually the belt started to run backwards so it was pushing the print into the nozzle I had to quickly like pull the plug again <laughs> so that's the second flaw I found in our firmware and I'm expecting that to be fixed as well so now that I knew that I couldn't rely on power loss recovery and I couldn't rely on filament runout I made sure I had a full spool of filament I made sure I didn't come near the cord and I printed the, the sword or the dagger and it came out beautifully. Now this still has the support material underneath, but the finish of this, the quality is excellent. It really is good for a belt printer. I mean, my CR30 from Creality doesn't print anywhere near as good as this. This is really, really clean. So what I decided to do was then print other sample prints and they have a chest set. And I think I had one piece fail. 
but it's really they're not difficult prints but they're really smooth they came out really clean so at that point I decided I want to actually slice something myself and they do include a slicer on their SD card it's Black Belt Cura which Black Belt is a high price belt printer but they share Cura which is open source for these belt printers so they have a version on their SD card with a profile for this machine but it only runs on Windows. I'm a Mac user so I had to get out my Windows laptop load it up and I was able to slice this little base right here which is a base that I print in my print farm for a universal flag. I wanted to print a hundred of these so I used that software set up a profile to print 100 of these units on here just over and over again made sure I was full of filament and everything else and it printed 99 out of 100 perfect one of them was shifted a little bit it was like mid print it wasn't the first one it wasn't the last one it was a mid print and it shifted a little bit but other than that 99 perfect bases I went back and printed another 100 more and I think I got 98 out of 100 I'm actually now pretty impressed with this thing because the print quality of these is really good and I just I'm happy to have a belt printer that prints this good that I can rely on my CR30 it just isn't as reliable for me it was a pre beta that I upgraded and stuff but I just cannot get as good a quality as I'm getting out of this thing so this thing's got me excited again about belt printing now this machine I don't have the cover for the fan on it I've left it off so I can keep an eye on things so I can see the nozzle easier. So I may put this back on and, and run it some more, but it's printing so good I just almost don't want to touch it. <laughs> but I, I will update the firmware when that firmware is released. I'm told it's being sent to me like within a few days. This is available on Amazon.com. I'll put a link to it in the description below. The CR30 costs a little over $1,000. This one I think is around $800, $850 on Amazon right now and they had limited supply. I know that some of the first machines had the same firmware that I have or very similar. So if you get one and you're having issues, look for a new firmware update. I know there's one coming out very, very soon. So overall, I think this has a lot of potential and I'm really excited about where this is going, especially the belt printing. I love belt printing. It's, it's just got so much potential. But if you've got one of these and you're having experience, let me know in the comments below. It's pretty new. I don't expect too many people to have it. But I'm going to play with this. I'm going to update the firmware and I'll let you know about how that goes in a future video. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.